In the United States Senate today, we have a chance to take a step to make the Gulf Coast whole again. In a sign of solidarity for the Gulf, of the five Gulf Coast states that collectively have two Democratic senators and eight Republican senators, all but one senator on those five states signed as a sponsor of the bill. It's bipartisan. This common sense legislation, it's supported by so many people out there that look at this stuff. National environmental groups, sportsmen, chambers of commerce, academic institutions, local governments, the business community. And so today's vote is going to be a huge step toward making sure that the fine that's going to be imposed upon BP, however much it is, ends up in the local communities that were harmed by BP's oil spill. Otherwise, the money is going to end up in the federal treasury, and there's no telling then where it's going to be spent. So the Restore Act Amendment provides funding to each Gulf state for ecosystem restoration and economic recovery. It also creates a federal state council responsible for de developing and executing a holistic plan to increase the resiliency of the Gulf ecosystem. You've seen uh, why were dolphins, why were baby dolphins dying? We don't know in record numbers. We've got to find out, and we've got to test these results for years to come. The amendment is also going to ensure that each Gulf state would come up with a state plan that's consistent with the federal state council plan. And finally, this bill sets aside funding for science, specifically dedicating funding for data collection for our fisheries, for our wildlife, for long-term observation and monitoring, and sets up centers of excellence to carry out the research on the Gulf for years to come. But there's also a national component this bill. It creates and sets aside the funding for an endowment for the oceans, an endowment for the Great Lakes, so that in addition to restoring the Gulf where the harm occurred, we can better protect all of our coasts from environmental harm. And it provides substantial investments in the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which I mentioned which protects and conserves land in each and every state in this union. I believe that our people, the whole of America, deserve a healthy and productive Gulf, and the civil fines that are going to be assessed to BP are a place that can ensure that. I'd like to share with my colleagues a vision for a restored Gulf of Mexico. One of the lessons that we learned, and we learned it too late, is that we do not have sufficient understanding of the Gulf ecosystem. We know that one third of our domestic seafood comes from the Gulf waters, but we didn't have a clear picture on the biological status of two thirds of the federally managed fish stocks that call the Gulf home. So it's important that some of these fines go toward dedicated long-term science about the Gulf ecosystem. That was one of the main things that I wanted to get into the Restore Act because of the obvious implications for the long term in the future. A restored Gulf 
is one in which clean water that's free from algae blooms and free from tar balls is home to oyster reefs and fish habitat and seagrass beds where charters ferry tourists from hotels to pristine beaches and then on out to the productive fishing spots. And an integral part of the restoration is to shore up the coastal communities that were hardest hit by the economic impacts of the oil spill. And it's going to take a substantial investment to achieve those goals. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, the Gulf cannot wait. The rigid partisanship that has sometimes gridlocked this body has given way to a spirit of strong collaboration and bipartisanship in this Senate when it comes to the Restore Act. I want to thank all the co-sponsors of the amendment and the co-sponsors of the Restore Act. And I would urge, I would plead with our colleagues to support this amendment. It's the right thing to do for the Gulf. It's the right thing to do for the country. Mr. President, I yield the floor.